Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is your civil girl. In this video, we're going to see 10 interview questions that have been asked in many of the top MNCs like LNT, uh, Tata Projects, SPCL, and Gamon Industries. So let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment, and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So the first question is, what is shear center? So giving you the definition, shear center is a point through which if the external load passes, then there will be no twisting of the section. The section will only be subjected to bending. It won't be subjected to torsion. So shear center, it is an important uh, design consideration when it comes to thin walled members. So what is a thin walled member? So if the thickness thickness of a member is smaller, very small when compared to other dimensions, then it is called as a thin walled member. So giving you two examples here, let me take a C section, a C, uh, a C shaped thin section and an I section. So here in C section, we know that it is symmetrical around, along one axis. So this is a monosymmetric section. Whereas I section, it is symmetrical along both the X and Y axis. Therefore, this is called as symmetric section, just symmetric section. So for a monosymmetric section, the center of gravity will be here. For a symmetric section, it will be somewhere here. So uh, this is when you come to shear center, if you look at a uh, symmetrical section here, you can see that in a symmetrical section, both shear center and the center of gravity, they will be at the same point. Whereas in monosymmetric section, if the center of gravity, I'm sorry, the center of gravity won't be here, the center of gravity will be here. Whereas the shear center will be somewhere here. I'm really sorry. This is the pole of the section and not center of gravity. This is only center of gravity. So center of gravity will be within the section, but uh, the shear center, it will be outside the section. But we have to uh, note something here that the shear center, it will be in the axis of the center of gravity in a monosymmetric section. So when we apply a load in this shear center, this whole structure or member it will be subjected only to bending there will not be any torsion so this is the significance of the shear center and it is mostly used in thin wall members so let's go to the next question what is meant by fatigue giving you the definition fatigue is the weakening of a material caused by repeatedly applied loads so giving you this uh, graph here we can see that this graph is plotted between strength and the number of cycles and we can see that during uh, this these number of cycles is the repeated loads uh, what is meant by repeated load say let me take a uh, road here so this is my road so i have my vehicles running over my road so these vehicles they will be continuously moving on the road so the road will be subjected to both loading and unloading that is the loads are uh, placed and then removed so this type of uh, thing is called as cyclic loading so the number of when you come to the graph here the number of cycles uh, is plotted in the x-axis and strength is plotted in the y-axis and you can see as the cycle increases the strength of the uh, concrete or the member it decreases but it reaches constant at a point and this point is called as the endurance limit so if they ask you what is the endurance limit you can also tell this and where will this endurance limit happen? This will happen at the 2 million cycles. That is 2 into 10 power 6. At this stage, there will be uh, the concrete or member will attain its endurance limit. And after this, there will not be any effect of fatigue. It will be a straight line. That is, it will be constant. There will not be any losing of strength. Going to the next question. What is the minimum grade of concrete for RCC in seawater? So it is uh, M30 for RCC and M20 for PCC. So you can see that uh, RCC has a higher amount of grade than PCC. Uh, the reason here is because uh, I have already told this in the previous videos. In case you don't know them, I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, so uh, let me take a 50 kilonewton load, right? 
So I'm going to design my section for this 50 color Newton in both PCC and RCC. So when I'm designing it in PCC, steel is not going to be present. So only my concrete is going to take the whole uh, load of the structure. So because of this, in order to compensate the steel that I'm not providing, the section of the member will be large. The area of concrete taken will be very large to uh, compensate or take care of this 50 kilo newton. Whereas when I come to RCC, I am giving uh, steel reinforcements here because of which the same load can be taken by a smaller amount of section that is a smaller section because I am providing my reinforcement. Because of this here the area of concrete is reduced but area of steel is also introduced. So now uh, if my concrete grade is not uh, very high means then what will happen is this cover which I have provided here it may deteriorate so if this cover deteriorates then these steel bars they will be subjected to environmental conditions so if these steel bars are uh, becoming vulnerable to the environment then they will lose its strength and the whole structure will fail so because of this the area of concrete which is remaining will be very less one compared to the area of concrete in the PCC so uh, this much amount of area of concrete is required to take 50 kN but since this uh, steel has failed I have only the small amount of concrete to take care of 50 kN because of which my structure will fail so in RCC the cover plays an important role and in order for the cover to be uh, safe and very durable we are going for a higher grade in RCC whereas for PCC since cover is not an issue we are going for a lower grade. So this is for seawater for RCC and PCC. In general for RCC the minimum uh, grade of concrete used is M15 for PCC the minimum grade is M10. Uh, so if you come to pre-stressed pre -stressed structures, so you have both uh, pre-tensioned and post-tensioned. In pre-tension, we'll go for a higher grade that is M40. For post-tension, we will go for M30. Thing to keep in mind is uh, the minimum grade of concrete for water tank is M20. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What is meant by honeycomb? So giving you the definition, honeycombs are hollow spaces and cavities left in concrete mass on the surface or inside the mass where concrete could not reach. So you can see in this diagram that this portion, this is what we call as honeycomb. This happens because of, uh, uh, say, say, low workability. Poor compaction. So because of this what happens, these two reasons what happens is uh, it is very much visible after we take out the shutter it will be very much visible to our naked eye itself. So we can go for immediate replacement of the uh, structure if it is possible or we can repair the same. So honeycomb it is a very uh, dangerous dangerous formation in concrete because it makes the inner part of the concrete vulnerable to the atmosphere or the environment therefore honeycomb should be treated with care at the beginning stages itself so going to the next uh, uh, question it is what is the initial and final setting time of cement giving you the answer the initial setting time of cement is 30 minutes final setting time of cement is 10 hours so brushing up the concept of initial and final setting time we will use a Vicat apparatus and in Vicat apparatus, uh, say uh, we use Vicat apparatus also to find the standard consistency of cement, right? Standard consistency. So in standard consistency, we will use a plunger. Whereas for uh, setting time, we have both initial setting time and final setting time. For initial setting time, we will use a needle of uh, one millimeter square area a square needle of one millimeter square area and for final setting time along with this needle we will use an annular ring it will be this needle will be projecting outside so if you look at the plan it will be something like this so uh, 
final setting time is taken as the time taken for only this projecting part to make an impression uh, without this annular ring so this is what we call as final setting time and initial setting time so these both are given for OPC uh, if admixtures are added it, uh, the initial and final setting time may vary even it varies for PPC itself so going to the next question the weight of steel formula so the weight of steel is given by this formula where w is equal to d square l by 162 so this question is very important if you are a site engineer or if you are applying for the post of a site engineer so where w is the weight of steel bars in kg uh, d is the diameter in mm and l is the length of bar in meter so let me solve a quick question here uh, say what is the weight of 10 meters of uh, 12 mm let me take 16 mm d square l by 162 so d square is 16 square into l in meters is 10 divided by 162 the answer will be 15.802 kgs so this will be the answer. So going to the next question. What is the difference between guniting and shortcreting? So shortcrete refers to a wet concrete that is already fully mixed before it is shot out. And guniting is a dry concrete mix that only mixes with water when it is sprayed. So shortcrete in uh, simple words. Shortcrete we already make the concrete wet concrete. We will put it inside a system where it is subjected to pressure and as a result it will be pumped out. So here the concrete itself is first hand mixed and then it is placed inside the equipment. This is shortcrete. So when you come to guniting, so in guniting we will mix all the dry ingredients together first and they will be subjected into an equipment subjected to high pressure. So they will be passing through this uh, equipment and just when they are about to be sprayed outside or just when they are about to be expelled outside we will give an water inlet here which is filled with water so this water will mix with the dry ingredients only at the end where before just it is just before it is about to be spread so this type of concreting is called as guniting thing next question uh, where is working stress method used it is used in water tanks chimneys and silos so it was used in bridge bridge construction but the latest code has uh, has recommended us to use limit state method only so going to the next question what are the types of slump so we have like four different types of slump of which these first three are important so the first one is true slump here we can see that this is my slump cone and there has been a considerable amount of uh, subsidence but the shape of the cone has been retained. So this is called as a true slump and this type of concrete is said to have medium workability. Now coming to this uh, second type of slump, we can see that the shape of the concrete is pretty much the same shape of the cone itself. Therefore we can say that the workability is very less and the concrete is very stiff coming to the third third type we can see that the concrete has collapsed to the floor this is because of high workability and the high amount of water present inside so this is the collapse and in shear the concrete it subsides to one side alone so these are the four different types of uh, slums so giving you the dimensions of slump cone it is one feet tall that is it is 30 centimeter tall 20 centimeter uh, wide in the bottom and 10 centimeter diameter at the top so this is the dimension of slump going to the next question the effect of aggregate size on strength so the answer is bigger the aggregate size lesser is the strength why is this because this is because of something called itz which is also called as interfacial transition zone So this is my interfacial transition zone. Where will this occur? This interfacial transition zone will be found outside the aggregates or at the periphery of the aggregates. So let me take a concrete mix and let me assume that I have only one aggregate in it and this is my aggregate. Okay. 
so what happens is as uh, in my concrete mix i will have water present in it so these waters because of the surface tension and other attractive forces like van der waals what it will do is it will come and adhere itself to the surface of the aggregate mostly below the aggregate but it will also be present around the aggregate so this uh, the water it is distributed throughout the concrete but around the aggregate the presence of water is very high as a result the water cement ratio in this particular part is very very high when compared to the water cement ratio in the other parts so we know that water cement ratio it is uh, indirectly proportional to strength higher the water cement ratio lower is the strength so since the water cement ratio is very high here what happens is say uh, my uh, css gel it will be forming very dense layers here around uh, the aggregate but when it comes to the part near the aggregates it will form only porous networks so because of this porous network our uh, concrete which is surrounding the aggregate it will be very less in strength so now we can understand why itz is a problem itz causes less strength in the aggregates or around the aggregates and we know that concrete is a homogeneous structure is not a homogeneous structure it is a heterogeneous structure it is not homogeneous therefore uh, the strength of the structure it relies on the bond strength here the bond between uh, the aggregates and the bulk mortar so we can see that this bond strength it is compromised or it is affected by this interfacial transition zone now that we have seen that it affects the uh, bond strength let us go into the question the effect of aggregate size so let me take a small aggregate so a small aggregate means i will have a small itz zone and if my itz is less then my strength will be high that is it does not uh, cause that much difference to my strength let me take a bigger aggregate now so when i take a larger size aggregate the surface area increases and as a result my itz also increases the area of itz also increases as a result my strength of the concrete decreases that is the reason why bigger the aggregate lesser is the strength i hope you guys found this video useful and if you did please do like it share it see you in the next video bye bye